What's up guys, it's Archer here, and welcome back to my OOTB 19 franchise with the Kansas City Royals. Um, if you didn't watch last episode, a lot of stuff went on, uh, so definitely go check it out. Um, as it is right now, we are just moving into free agency, and uh, I've been looking at the team a little bit, uh, kind of set up the lineups, and... Um, I'm not sure that this is what I'm going to stick with, but this is just kind of to show you that we have a complete team on offense, and um, even our pitching staff, we can plug people in uh, and be fine, so it's not like we're at a lack for players, uh, so at this point we're just kind of looking to make uh, speculative plays and um, just try and get somebody that's maybe undervalued on the market and um, try to flip them at the deadline or you know just get some some nice value out of them uh, one of the guys that i'm looking at to do that with is jerry blevins so jerry blevins has been on the mets uh, last year he had a pretty bad season um, and usually when i look at something like this and i go okay well he was good in real life and then the game got a hold of him and now he's not that good um, but we're bad we're a bad team so you know maybe like a seven or eight million dollar contract if we can give it like a team option and give um, whoever would be trading for him a little more flexibility then you know maybe we we flip this guy the deadline because he has like a 2-5 ERA and we actually get a, a legit prospect back for him. So um, this is one of the guys that I'm looking at. And um, then uh, if we move on a little bit, there was, hold on, uh, Daniel Hudson. Uh, so Daniel Hudson is another one of those guys who um, kind of a continual underperformer actually in real life and in the game. But, you know, he's got decent stuff, decent movement. He throws pretty hard. He's not like an extreme fly ball pitcher or anything. So this is the type of guy that, you know, again, maybe comes out hot and he only wants uh, 3.9. So I'm going to be looking for stuff like this. I don't really see us going after a batter. Um, I just think that anybody that's going to be worth trading at the deadline is worth signing for a good club. Um, maybe somebody like Corey Spangenberg we can do something cool with, or um, like Eduardo Escobar, but uh, I really just don't think so. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of uh, look through the, the less obvious places of free agency, and um, I'll kind of be back with you if I've made a decision to offer a guy a contract or something like that, and um, I will see you guys then. So guys, it turned out that uh, Corey Spangenberg only wanted a uh, minor league deal, and um, I clicked on it so fast that I didn't even get to talk about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we've submitted an offer for one year, 1.1 million. It's like a minor league deal, and um, yeah, that was... I, I expected him to want like you know, five million or something, which I wasn't going to do, but yeah, minor league deal. Sure. Something like that is great. So, uh, I'll be back with you if, uh, there's another free agent that I'm thinking about offering a contract to. All right, guys. So, uh, Jerry Blevins has kind of been playing hardball with me. Um, I have managed to get him down a little bit, uh, and actually the, the negotiation system for O to P 19, I think is actually kind of improved, um, because I had a team option attached and he said, Hey, I, I don't like that team option without, um, you know, some sort of, um, you know, guarantee on my part that I get something out of it. Um, so he asked me to increase the buyout, so I doubled it, and now he's okay with it. So um, that's actually pretty cool. I don't think that happened in last year's game. So um, kudos to the guys at um, OTP Developments for uh, putting that in. That's really cool. Um, but yeah, I think this is a contract that I'm happy with. We're probably not ever going to see that $5 million, whether we trade him or whether we just decline the option. Um, so $4 million for one season for a guy that I actually think is pretty good, even if he is 35. Um, I think I'm going to be pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and submit. And uh, let's go fishing. All right, guys. So uh, this is another candidate for um, kind of relief duty. Um, I was looking for a guy with big stuff and uh, good movement, and I came up with Austin Adams. I don't think he's ever played in the majors. Um, in fact, I'm certain that he hasn't. But he's got great stuff. He's got great movement. You know, uh, if the walks don't hurt him too much early in the season, who knows? So, uh, could be pretty nice. And he only wants a minor league deal, so again, this guy may just stay in the 
miners for the first like you know 20 days or something and we see what we have but um for now i'm super happy with it so uh, we're gonna go ahead and submit that offer and then uh i think we may dip our toes back in the pool for one last player um i'm not exactly sure who i'm going to be looking for but um i think i want one more like major league contract type of guy um i i don't know why i feel that way um i think it's just kind of insurance because you know this guy may never get to our major league roster spangenberg may never get to our major league roster the only guarantee we have right now is blevins and uh i just kind of like having some more chips to play with as we get towards this season so um i'm gonna go looking one more time for probably just one more player and um i'll get back to you guys if i find anything different i may move time forward even to like uh winter meetings or something and um just to kind of uh, see if the market changes any, but, um, I'll be back with you guys if I find anything. If not, um, I'll be back right for this Rule 5 draft, and we'll take care of that. All right, guys, so before we got too far, uh, Jerry Blevins is coming back at us and saying that he's got an offer in hand from Chicago, and that just will not do, so let's see what he wants. Uh, he wants those two years evened out, and that is still not bad for me. I think my cap on him is probably, like, seven million. I don't want to spend more than that, but... Um, yeah, I haven't found any other free agents that I really want to sign right now. Um, Spangenberg has signed, so he's in our AAA club, and uh, Austin Adams has also signed. So those guys are both in our minor league system for now, and, um, you know, they'll probably be in spring training, and we'll see how they do. But um, I also signed this kid. I thought he was, like, 24, 25, or, um, yeah, I thought he was 25, and that would mean that he wasn't subject to international free agent signing rules, um, but I think because he's, I, I really don't know, but OTP is not counting him as an international amateur, so the way, so for, like, a Shohei Otani, right, he could only take a minimum contract because he came over from, um, he came over from Japan, and he uh, he was only, I think he's 22, uh, maybe 23, and you have to be 25 before you can accept an actual major league deal. Um, so I had this guy, I had him, um, I was going to give him a major league deal, and um, actually OTP was going to let me do that. Um, so I had to withdraw my offer and then give him a minor league offer because um, that would have been breaking my realism, man. I can't have you doing that. So, um, that's something that they probably need to look at in, um, maybe a patch or something like that. But, uh, I had to catch myself, man. I was going to offer this guy <laughs> major league money. Um, and, uh, I had to back off of that because he's only 19 and I'm not allowed to do that. Uh, and I will check in with things like this. Uh, so like big free agent signings and Clayton Kershaw went to the Yankees because, because the Yankees, I guess. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> I really hope that doesn't happen in real life. That would make me so mad. Uh, Zach Burton has actually signed with the Nationals, which is kind of cool. That's probably a good signing for them. Um, I believe... Yeah, so they look pretty decent. Uh, they moved Doolittle to set up. That's what I was wondering, um, whether uh, Britain was going to be the closer or not. But of course he is. He's Zach Britton. Uh, so Hall of Fame voting is going to begin. Um, I always kind of like doing this just for fun. And uh, especially later on in the series. Um, early on, it's not that enjoyable for me. But later on, especially when I see like somebody from my team or a guy that was a, a division rival and, and they get you know, elected to the Hall of Fame, and I get to vote for him. I think that that's really cool. Uh, let's see. So, I'm probably going to chop this up and just show you my final ballot because there are a lot of guys on here that I'm going to have to consider. I don't take this too seriously, but I do like looking at everybody and not turning in a bogus ballot. So, um... I'm going to do that real quick, and I'll be back with you uh, when I have my final ballot. All right, guys, so I think I've settled myself on a ballot. Uh, first two names on the list I know are going to be pretty controversial, but um, I've had this conversation with people before. This is just kind of what I believe, 
Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens are two of the greatest players to ever play the game. I think that there are guys in the hall that have already been juicing. Um, that's just my belief. Uh, Pudge, some other guys uh, that I don't think I need to mention. Um, and the other thing is that it was not against the rules of baseball to do what they did at the time. It was bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not condoning it just because it wasn't against the rules. They absolutely should not have done it. However, and you know we don't know for sure, but... If they did steroids, to me, it wasn't against the rules. It's very different to somebody like, um, uh, who's the guy that uh, I always talk about? Uh, Manny uh, Ramirez, uh, who, it was against the rules, he knowingly did it, he got caught. To me, that's different. Um, Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens are a different case for me. And again, they're two of the best players to ever play the game. So if we're going to have them not be in the hall we, I think, have some problems. So um, those are my first two names. Julio Franco, Holiday. I don't think those are particularly controversial. Um, Jeff Kent is a guy that's kind of a, you know, pet favorite for me. He's one of the greatest offensive second basemen of all time. Um, if you compare his numbers to almost any second baseman uh, in the game's history, he looks pretty good. So he's I think he gets a lot of um a bad rep for being not the best locker room guy but um when it came down to it he was a great ball player and if you talk to his teammates they will all tell you what he did on the field was far more valuable than any shortcomings he might have had in the locker room um Edgar Martinez uh Fred McGriff again I think those are guys that are just going to get in and um or that should be in, and I don't think that it should be too controversial. You have a guy that has almost 500 home runs, and I think it's kind of dumb that we say, oh, he didn't hit seven more home runs in his career, so it's not a round number, and it's not an automatic in. Um, and then Edgar Martinez is just a great player. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Musina, if, you, um, if you're not on board with Mike Musina being in the Hall of Fame, uh, I encourage you to look up, there's an article on Fangraphs about it, And basically, if you look at the era that he was in, the offense was so good, he really looks a lot better in that light. Um, And, you know, a 3.68 ERA is not really that bothersome to me anyway. And then he has the 119 whip, the 2,800 strikeouts. Like, this is a a really good player, and this is a Hall of Fame player to me. Um, My last two picks, Kurt Schilling, whatever you think about the man now, he didn't have those problems while he was playing as much, and um, that's what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at him now, so that's why he's in the hall for me. Um, Billy Wagner, now I know what you're saying. Archer, why is Mariano Rivera not on your ballot? Obviously, Mariano Rivera should be on everyone's ballot. Here's the thing. Billy Wagner is one of the best closers of all time, and quite frankly, almost as good as Mariano Rivera. And the fact that he is not getting his due is so upsetting to me. Every year, I'm so upset by it. And so I'm putting him on my ballot. And until Billy Wagner gets his due, I'm not putting Mariano Rivera on there um, until Billy Wagner comes off the ballot. And um, I'm going to do that with every reliever that I see. So that's just kind of how I feel about it. Uh, I'm, I'm a little upset as you can probably tell that billy wagner doesn't get his due but um mariano rivera is gonna get anyway he doesn't need my help Um, but if you look at their like career numbers yeah rivera had a longer career and he had more saves which is a useless statistic but if you look at like their comparables they're really close to the same player and it's just crazy to me that um billy wagner doesn't get his due so i'm gonna submit my ballot And that'll be that. That took a little longer than I thought it would. It turns out I had more opinions than I thought I did about the whole thing. Um, So I'm going to dip back into free agency now since winter meetings have started. And uh, I'll just kind of see if I can uh, get anybody else. I probably won't be able to. And um, the next time you'll see me is at the Rule 5 draft. And we can talk a little bit about maybe some big contracts that have been signed uh, in the MLB. All right, guys, so I've been debating a little bit back and forth on this one, but I think I am going to try and sign Tanner Roark. Um, if the bidding goes too high, I am you know, definitely not in on him, but this does not look like a very big contract to me. I'm going to see if I can get him in for a team option in the second year, but um, you know, it's not going to be a big deal for me if he doesn't. 
to me, the rationale behind this is that he does have one kind of above average tool, maybe two, and he's just kind of average above him, uh, really across the board. Um, and uh, like my scout says, he should have success at the back end of rotation. And my hope is that, you know, maybe he just kind of has a, a good start or, you know, again, we're, we're trying to get lucky. That's the whole thing. You, you throw enough darts at the dartboard that one of them hits the bullseye and that's the guy you get a prospect back for. Um, so that's what I'm doing with Tanner Roark. And, um, yeah, we're going to see what happens. So let's see about this. There we go. So yeah, that's that's not a big offer, and um, I'm pretty happy with it. So I think that's all the negotiating I'm going to do with other free agents. Um, I, I really, I looked a little bit, but I, I just didn't find any other batters that I wanted, and um, yeah, mainly we're, we're just kind of set. You know, we want to be bad, so um, we don't want to sign any big, and um you know, what little we can do is save money, so we don't want to really sign too many players, and we have a full roster already, so anybody we're adding to that is kind of just extra pieces, and um, unless they're going to give us trade value back, or they're going to be on a minor league deal, that's not really good for us, so um, yeah, I'm going to go to the Rule 5 draft, and uh, we're going to get that handled, and I'll be right back. So we're back, guys, for the Rule 5 draft. Um, one of the things about uh, the expansion is that now instead of having the second pick in the draft, uh, which I worked so hard for, uh, we're now going to have the fourth. So that works for the Rule 5 draft and then I believe also for the Real Life draft as well. So let's get right into this. The Rule 5 draft is um, probably not the way that we're going to get talent right now, but um, in future seasons this is going to start being a little bit more important is just trying to find those diamonds in the rough and um, seeing what we can do. I haven't sorted for starting pitcher right now, but let's kind of go to all players, and I probably need to protect the guy that I just signed. So there we go. Um, I'm going to advance the draft until it is our pick. So, my scout wants me to pick Austin Romine, which I guess is not the worst pick in the world, um, I really don't feel like I need a catcher though, and so that's not super what I'm looking for. I'm gonna go to batting ratings and just see. Um, you actually look pretty decent, Ronald Guzman. Um, Rob Ref Snyder. Uh, I don't think I'm really into you, but um, Ronald Guzman. Let's see what let's see what he's all about. So pretty good defensive first baseman, plus contact. Um, average gap, home run, power, uh, average eye, slightly above average, avoid Ks, no speed because he's a first baseman, absolutely crushed double A last year, probably was good for triple A because that's where they had him before. Um, let's see what our scout says, but I'm kind of thinking this is the guy. 25 homers a season in the future. Solid defender. Um, expected to fulfill a reserve role as a below average first baseman, um, which that would be fine if that's all he ends up being for us, but you know, who knows? Um, let me see if there's anybody with crazy power. Nobody that is worth the risk, probably. Rowdy Tellez, maybe. The question is is that slight uptick in power worth? the down tick and contact. Hmm. I wish you'd tell me how many home runs you think he's going to hit for a season. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, should make him a front runner for an audition as a first baseman. So my scout's a little higher on Tellez. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think maybe he's right about that. Let's just sort this to all batters. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've, 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 for a first baseman, I think the, the uptick in power is good. The difference between average and plus is probably fairly large at that position, so, um, he won't hit lefties as well, but righties he's going to be pretty nice. 
So yeah, I think that that's who I'm going to go with. And again, uh, these players have to stay on your 25-man active roster the whole season, or you have to give them back, which sounds maybe bad, but um, for us, it's kind of nice because if it doesn't work out, we can just send them back to where they came. You know, we're not under any obligation to... Um, I'm just checking out Isa and Diaz real quick. Um, we're not under any obligation to like pay them or take care of them or, or trade them off somewhere. Um, we have a really easy way of getting rid of them if we don't want them in our organization. So that's kind of nice. Um, let's take a look at pitching ratings um, while I go until our next pick. <laughs> For a second there, I thought that that was... Um, the other Edwin Diaz, and I was like, he's in the Rule 5? That's weird. So, let's see. This man does not look bad. Philip Pfeiffer. Man, I really hope that's how that's said. Um, got to double A, was decent at, well, actually, barely pitched at double A. It was really at high A. Hmm. Yeah, I just don't think we need a reliever at the moment. Like, I guess that's cool, but I don't think it's really anything we need. Um, yeah, I think that's that's kind of it for us. Who's this Williams Astadio? Uh, I mean, that's an interesting player. It's not somebody that I'm going to draft, but that's interesting. Yeah, I, th I think I'm done. So um, what you can do if you don't want to make any more picks is just say complete draft. And um, unlike with the other draft where your scout will just complete the rest of it for you, um, in this that means that it just finishes. So your scout or your assistant general manager just says, nope, no more picks for us, we're good. And um, we get Rowdy Tellez, and that's enough for us. So... Uh, I'm gonna cut out this loading screen and then I'll be right back. All right guys, so we're out of that loading screen. Uh, apparently the money has been flying around. Uh, I hadn't noticed this. I just saw that Yasmani Grandal signed for a lot, but he signed for 21 million per year and 152 million total. And that is insane. But then AJ Pollock went out and got 147 million total and 21 a year. And I actually, I mean, I think he's good. Don't get me wrong, but in this game, He's not $21 million a year good. Um, even Astrobal Cabrera got $20 million annually, which is, admittedly, he had a great season last year, 306, 376, 486, but, I mean, come on, man. <laughs> so um, I think the next thing we're going to do is just show you the Hall of Fame voting results, and then probably I'm not going to show you spring training. I don't think it's that important. Um, we'll just go straight to the beginning of the regular season, and then we'll play that first game. Alright guys, I didn't think this would happen so soon, but Jerry Blevins is back, so um, like I said, my cap on him is $7 million a year, and we're not there yet, so we're going to keep doing that, and um, probably that's the last time that you're going to see Jerry Blevins until he either signs with me or until he decides to sign somewhere else, so um, like I said, I'm going to try and move us up to the Hall of Fame voting results. All right, guys, so Tanner Roark is in. He has signed his contract, and, uh, you know, I don't know what we're going to get out of him this season, but, um, you know, small things like this, it's just kind of cool to sign a player. So um, one thing that I did see, though, is that Dallas Keuchel has gone to the Dodgers, which is pretty interesting. Um, he's on $17 million a year, which, I will remind you, is less than Astrobal Cabrera is making. So you have that to take away. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, the settings in this year's game I think are a lot more tilted towards um, like statistics. So like if you had a really great year last year, they're gonna pay for you. Um, so I may need to tone that down just a touch. But um, I'll see you guys at Hall of Fame, or if uh, we see Jerry Blevins again, who knows? All right, guys. So we have the Hall of Fame voting results, and as I predicted, Mariano Rivera made it in without my help. So, a lot of other people didn't vote for him, too, all right? It's not just me. <laughs> um, but uh, Edgar Martinez did not make it in. Fred McGriff did not make it in, which uh, I think is kind of a tragedy. 
Bonds was really close, Halliday was really close, Clemens was kind of close, so I think they're all going to make it in. Mussina might make it in. Um, Schilling is kind of in that boat too, but um, it seems like everybody else that I voted for, not quite as lucky. So, um, yeah, that's... I mean, that's a disappointment, but, you know, not everybody thinks like me, and that's totally fine. Um, in fact, if you have your own opinions down in the comments, you disagree with me, go ahead. Uh, I'm happy to have a conversation about it. You know, I, I think this is one of the cool things about baseball is that every year we have this discussion about, you know, who needs to be in and who needs to not be in. So, anyway, this is really cool. Um, so, Jerry Blevins. Uh, I just noticed that that's not a... Um, personal message, but I did get a contract thing. Apparently, we're going to be in touch. Um, so I think he liked that last offer I got him. It's up to around $7 million now. It's right on the cusp. I think if he doesn't go with this offer, we're just not going to worry about it. But um, I'm going to probably just go until the regular season unless we sign Jerry Blevins. So um, I'll either see you on opening day or we'll um, have Jerry Blevins resolved. So guys, Jerry Blevins wants a little too much money for me. Um, this is kind of super arbitrary, but I've said, you know, seven million's my cap and seven million's my cap. Uh, he's a 35 year old lefty and, you know, just to be honest, I, I don't want him that bad. Um, and um, seven million is not a lot, but you know, it's not money that we have to spend, and um, I just don't think that the return is, is going to justify the money that we're going to pay him, so that's uh, maybe a little bit disappointing, but, you know, we have some other additions that are going to be cool for us. We have Tellez, um, and then we have uh, Roark, so uh, we have those minor league deals in the works, so I think that that's all really cool. Um, I haven't decided who I'm going to have start opening day yet. I think I'm going to have probably just Roark start it so that you guys can see him in action, so that I can see him in action, and, um, you know, I'll also play Tellez that day too, and uh, we'll just see our new guys in action, and I think that'll be pretty cool. So I'll see you guys on opening day. Hey guys, uh, Mike Moustakis has signed with the Phillies while I was away. Um, this does mean we get a compensation pick in next year's draft, which is great. Um, unfortunately, it was not a very big contract. Um, I don't know how this is coded into the game. The way the rules work in the MLB is that like, you know, how much the contract is matters, and I'm not sure that that's in there, but for now I'm just going to assume that it's not going to be a very good pick. Um, however, though, we should have three first-round picks next year because we failed to sign one of our draft picks last year. Uh, we're going to have this compensation pick from Mike Moustakis, which I believe will also still be a first-rounder. might be an early second-rounder, but that is very close to the same thing. And then, of course, we'll have our own first-round draft pick. So, um, you know, a, a little sad to see him go. Obviously, he's a franchise legend, but it, it just wasn't working out for us. And, um, you know, he's 30, so I, I don't think we're going to get back to the playoffs before he starts declining. Uh, apart from that, we're just kind of uh, chugging along here and um, trying not to get injuries to anybody too young. Um, you know, I'm not going to be too sad if Ian Kennedy is out for two months, but... You know, uh, I don't want any of my actual uh, pieces that I might trade away or something like that to get injured, so we're just kind of meandering through. I'm trying to rest players pretty regularly, which is something that I think um, you should definitely not ignore in, uh, in spring training. So I'll be back on opening day, and um, we'll see what happens. Welcome back, guys. It is April 4th, and we are ready to get a new season underway. Uh, first things first, season expectations from our owner, David Glass. This is a reminder to stay respectable on the field. That's definitely what I'm going for, for the most part. Um, quick look at your, your top ten prospects here. Um, Fernando Tassis Jr. is on top of them at this moment. Uh, we are going to move to the team home screen, just so you can see very quickly... Um, you know, my starting rotation, um, and then my bullpen, and also my lineup. I have Whit Merrifield leading off, and then Ramon Torres, then Rowdy Tellez, and then Salvador Perez, um, just in hopes that maybe he can knock in some runs, and um, I don't know, maybe that'll raise his trade value or something. Uh, and then Chelsea Cuthbert, Cody Ash, Adalberto Mondesi, Donnie Deweese, and Brandon Downs. So that's what we're going with for this very first game against Boston. We're going up against Chris Sale. 
probably not going to go great, but uh, we're going to try and keep a positive attitude about it. Let's go in. Let's play the game against Boston. And, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to get this new season underway. Um, obviously, we didn't do a lot during the off season, but there's not much that we could do. Um, I'm mostly just excited for um, the draft and um, international free agent signing and, and trade deadline. You know, those are the big three things for us. So, yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm pretty excited for uh, all of those and, hey, you know, maybe even some surprise seasons from Telez or something like that. So should be a good one. All right, so uh, let's start the season off right. Chris Sale facing Ramon Torres. Uh, because he is a lefty, the lineup is a little different than the one that I told you about. But here we go. First pitch of the season for us. And it is just a weak grounder to Chris Sale, an easy out. And that's going to do it for the first out. By the way, Bryce Harper is on the Red Sox. Um, I don't know if you caught that, but it's a thing that happened. He's not being paid that much. Wow. Should have got me a Bryce Harper. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm just going to go and tell runners in scoring position, and uh, we do not get any. Tanner Roark is on the mound for the first game of the season. Let's see how he can do against Moogie Betts first, his first pitch of the season. And he's going to get a walk on a full count. That actually kind of sucks. But I'm just going to let Roark go until runner's in scoring position. And he immediately gives up a single to Benintendi, which moves Moogie Betts around. And that brings up Bryce Harper. So uh, I think that that's a home run. <laughs> oh, this could not be a... <laughs> This could not be a better summary of what's going to happen this season. I mean, that is, that's pretty much it. Thankfully, he gets through the rest of the inning unscathed, but oh boy. Um, all right, we're up against Chris Sale. He gets a clean inning because of course he does. We're not getting no hit, which is nice, but um, they have a 3 nothing lead. Actually, a pretty decent inning for Roark. He gets out of it clean. Chris Sale now has runners on the corners, and Adalberto Mondesi is up. Chris Sale kicks and throws, and that's going to be a strikeout. That's a glitch I've seen a couple of times where the pitcher kind of goes through their wind-up and then throws, and then the you know it doesn't actually happen for like three or four times. So I think that's something that's going to be addressed probably in a patch pretty soon. If the game doesn't crash on me right here, okay. Rowdy Tellis strikes out, and that's the end of the inning. We strand one on first and third, and uh, Chris Sale is rolling right now. Tanner Roark gives up a hit with one out remaining. Raphael Devers comes to the plate, hits this one deep into right field. Whit Merrifield trying to chase it, but that is going to be gone. And that's going to be a two-run, 372-foot shot for Raphael Devers, and they're going to extend their lead to 5 nothing, which is great. And that's going to be a much easier ball to deal with for Merrifield. And that's going to end the inning for us. Um, not a great one, <laughs> to be honest, and not a great start to the season. I'm not going to take Roark out until the fifth inning, um, just because... I don't feel like it. <laughs> um, and uh, also, I, I kind of want him to work through things. He didn't get as much time in spring training as I was hoping he would because he had a couple of little nagging injuries. So, um, by the way, we have two runs. So that's pretty nice. But, uh, yeah, he didn't get as much time in spring training, so I'm just trying to give him innings and pitches right now. And uh, that's the side retired. We do creep a little bit closer, so we'll see if Tanner Roar can keep it right there. And he gives up another hit with two outs. Let's see what can happen. This one's going to fly out, I believe, to third. Yeah, Cuthbert, nice play. That'll end the inning. If you look at hits, we're actually even, so that's kind of encouraging. Uh, okay, so we hit a home run. That's awesome. Um, I think it was Tellez, actually. Yeah, tell us. He had a home run. That's awesome. So, yeah, we're 3-5 now. And uh, Tanner Roark, let's see if he can stay out of trouble. He cannot. So, Mookie Betts gets on. I'm going to pitch around Bryce Harper. 
and it looks like a good decision as we get the out at first. So now we have one runner on, but only one out left. So I think I'm going to pitch around Rafael Devers as well, and we'll see if Roark can get out of this inning. That's a fly ball into the gap, and that looks like it's going to fall. With a better center fielder in center there, that might have worked out, but that's going to be another run on the board for them and Devers in at second base. So let's see what we can do with uh, Xander Bogarts. I think I'm just going to let him pitch to him, and we'll see what happens. I should have a man up in the pen right now, and um, I'm regretting that I don't. That one bounces off the wall. That's another double. Oh, he's going to stretch it to a triple. Wow. Okay. Xander Bogarts with a triple to score the run. So now things are 7-3, to three, and I definitely need to have a reliever up. This is definitely going to be long relief, so I'm going to warm up Birch Smith um, and Seth Manis. So one more batter for Tanner Roark. That's going to be strike three and uh, the end of the inning. Unfortunate that that happened, so uh, that's not helping his trade value, but it's early, so we'll see. Going to go to runners in scoring position. We actually get two men on, two outs. Brandon Downs. He's going to strike out. Things are still a little glitchy with this, so... Um, Bear with me if something happens and I, I have to wait a while to figure out what it was. Um, we're going to bring in... Uh, you know what? I, I like Manus better. Just as a person. So I'm going to get him out and I'm going to take down Birch Smith. Sit him down the bullpen. And uh, we'll see what Manus can do. His first time to shine. Okay. He gets one to Mondesi. That's a good play there. See if he can get out of the inning. He can, so Chris Sale, we're still facing him, and Ramon Torres is up. Let's see if we can get anything going here. We can. I think that was Tellus again. Yeah, he has two home runs on the first day of the season. That's awesome. So uh, we got Salvador Perez, and now we got a reliever in, a left-handed reliever, which is nice against Salvador Perez. So let's see if we can get anything going. We can't, and that brings out Seth Manis again. And he gets another clean inning, so now let's see if we can get a man on. We do. It's Whit Merrifield, and now we'll see what Chelsea Cuthbert can do with it. No outs. And this one is high and deep in the left field. Is it going to clear? It will. And that is going to be a home run, and we are kind of in this game, which is pretty remarkable. So, Chelsea Cuthbert brings it back, and uh, we'll see if we can get another man in scoring position. We cannot. Seth Manis, I feel like, is getting a bit tired. Um, so, I'm going to start warming up. Looking at the rest of their lineup, I'm going to start warming up Justin Grimm. And we'll see. Uh, we'll just go batter by batter with Manis and uh, see if we have any issues. Manis kicks and throws. He strikes out Rafael Devers. That's nice. Going to see what he does against Xander Bogarts. And he's on a very short leech at this point. And uh, that'll do it for him. Oh, no. Man, I thought that was out of there. But um, Deweese has it. Just kind of died out in left field there. And... Um, now I think I'm going to sit down Justin Grimm, and I'm going to get our closer up because I think Seth Manis is going to get us out of this. So we're going to warm up Love Lady and um, trust Manis to get out of it. Great play by Chelsea Cuthbert there. He grabs it. And now we're into the uh, top of the ninth and hoping that we can get a run or two. Uh, that's not going to do it from Mondesi. So that's one down, and uh, our chances are dwindling. But Tellez does knock one into the gap, and Rowdy Tellez has kind of been our entire <laughs> offense this game, um, which is really cool. I actually, I feel a little bit, I know it's super early, but I feel a little bit better about picking him in the Rule 5 now. 
Carson Smith is going to... Oh, it's snowing heavily. We called a snow delay. I've never seen that in OOTV. That's awesome. They've called the game. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's incredible. I mean, it sucks for us, but... <laughs> I've never seen that. I'm sorry. I'm s I, I should not be excited because I feel like we had a chance that game, but wow. Um, <laughs> I've never seen a snow out. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> great way to start off the season with something fun. Um, gotten a couple achievements as well. So uh, I think that is going to be it for this episode, guys. I'm actually pretty excited about playing through this season. Um, having some guys like Tellez uh, and Ramon Torres, who I, I don't know if he's the answer at second, but um, just those guys are, are kind of cool to have up the major leagues as um, maybe our first line. And then we also have those prospects still kicking around in the minors, and we got some chances to add more talent coming up. So we're really looking to build this organization into a lasting winner, and I think we can do that. So for now, I've been Archer. If you like the video, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out, and as always, I've really appreciated you watching, and um, we'll see you guys next time.